Welcome to The World According To on IMTS Plus. Over the next few minutes, we'll talk to Brian McMinn, Machine Tool Systems Head, as he continues to drive the growth at Siemens USA. So Brian, let's talk a little bit about your background. Tell us your story. I realized manufacturing was a thing early on in, in my uh, life, primarily because my father worked for Ford Motor Company. I can remember early on going to work with my dad and, and you know, on a plant tour and, and just seeing machines just doing crazy things and just having a, a cool a sense of, this is what I wanna do when I grow up. How the journey really began for me is I uh, went to a two-year technical school to understand electronics. My first car, it was a, a Ford Ranger and I always wanted the best stereo system in it. So I was always hanging up new stereos and speakers and amps and all these things. You know, if an amp failed, we'd take it right to electronic lab and swap out a capacitor or change the LED from red to blue to make it dif different and cool more than anyone else. That's really when I understood I liked electronics and, and uh, you know, controls and, and things like that. I've been in this industry now going on 28 years. I got into manufacturing really as a co-op going to work for a distributor and learning about what motion control systems are. I became an application engineer going out into the field and actually starting up motion systems, drives, motors, doing tuning, things like that. Really had a love for that motion control aspect and seeing things move and, and actually seeing a product of your work. After a couple more years, I had an opportunity to go into full line sales where I was responsible to work directly with the customers, with my team, to sell the full line card. What brought me to Siemens USA was really an opportunity to go work for a larger company. I'll always remember my first day at Siemens. It was almost 10 years ago uh, on St. Patrick's Day. The first week I joined Siemens, there was a large manufacturing event at Ford Field where we had thousands of people come in and I just thought, wow, what a great experience to work for such a great company and share our technology, our CNC controls, our motors, our drives, and how that product becomes a solution. Really what we sell to our customers are solutions. We talk a lot about factory of the future. What does that mean to you, starting with the machine tool? What that means to me is we need to, especially for the younger generation, uh, help them understand that manufacturing isn't dirty. Machines are becoming smarter. Uh, we're connecting edge devices to them, collecting data and using artificial intelligence to make machines smarter, which then makes your shop floor smarter. We'll have automation systems with robots that are loading and unloading machines. We'll have mixed technology with additive and subtractive machines all in one, a hybrid machine. We already see the, the transformation going from you know, three and four axis machines to five axis machines to uh, horizontal machines or hybrid machines like milling and turning and turning and milling. So this is where I see the, the, the future of manufacturing going. All right, so most of everything you just described is really rooted in digitalization. What does this digital transformation mean to a one-man job shop, to a small to medium-sized contract manufacturer? Where do they start? What do they need to know? So digitalization for the job shop, uh, for me, means collecting data from machines and understanding what to do with that data to have an accurate machine, to have more productivity out of that machine, to reduce cycle time. It also can mean now with the advent of digital twins. Digital twin is the real machine, of course, and then a virtual representation of that machine. So imagine just putting on a pair of VR glasses and walking up to a virtual machine and hit cycle start, just like you would if you were out on your own shop floor. You know, you can do studies on uh, cycle time. You could do collision detection. The smarter the machine becomes, the smarter the shop floor becomes, the smarter the whole environment becomes. Can you talk a little bit about some of those partnerships with machine tool builders and what that means to Siemens? Using digitalization and digital twins, we've been able to rapidly decrease the amount of time it takes to go to market. They design a machine in a, in a 3D world and we have the digital twin of our CNC control. We marry the two together so we can test out all the kinematics of the machine. We can dry run in a virtual world before they even start building the machine. When we look at manufacturing technology, you can look at it from production often, 
but there's an earlier stage, certainly that digitalization plays a role, and that is really in the design of something. If we think about design studios for large automotive companies, right? The Siemens and the American Control isn't specifically designed just for traditional milling, turning, and grinding. It, it can do additive, it can do clay modeling machines, it can do 2D fabrication with stone and wood, and in all different types of applications. It's a very open CNC controller for, for a wide range of different industries and markets. What do you see as far as the future for Siemens? What's next for the CNC control? If you would have asked me 10 years ago, would we have digital twin technology? I would, I would uh, probably say no. When we developed our control, we developed it for the future. We have some longevity in our, our latest Cindy Merck One control, but where do we take that control? Bolting on things like edge computing and, and gathering data with artificial intelligence and training that AI engine to do more with all of this data that we have. Looking at mixed technologies between turning and milling and additive and subtractive all in hybrid machines. The power of the CNC is in 10 years is gonna be tenfold of what it is today. And it's gonna to need to do that because of great machine builders and end customers pushing the limits of what the requirements of a CNC control is. So let's talk a little bit about your customers. Traditionally, we've been well known in automotive and automotive powertrain. And now with the movement towards EV, you know, there's a lot less machine parts in an electric motor and electric vehicle. The manufacturing requirements for EV is much different though than internal combustion engine. The, the, the parts need to be more accurate because they need to be quieter because you don't have uh, you know, a large combustion engine making a lot of noise. I think aerospace has nothing but room for growth with additive. As machine builders and end customers are trying to figure out how to go from R&D prototyping to a higher end production, they're going to need to move towards more industrial controls. For Siemens, additive technology and, and tying it with subtractive is, is definitely a growth lever for us. Lastly, what I would say is robotics. I think robots will play a key role in factories of the future, being able to do repair processes at, as an example. So, the world according to Brian McMinn is? The world according to Brian McMinn is all about digital transformation. The journey is different for everyone. It's an important journey to get on, so I challenge everyone to get started. And that's it for this episode of The World According To. Thanks to Brian McMinn of Siemens USA for hosting us here in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. We'll see you on the next episode.